What Dante did in this chapter felt more like what Meleriona would do when she's facing her opponent who is powering through her attack. So I kind of felt like Dante would be a perfect fit to fight Meleriona. Let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section. Alright, so we got a sneak peek into Grey's backstory, which was dark and kind of shady, but I kind of liked the vibe that it had with the Cinderella story. So it was a very interesting chapter. Alright, guys, Sean here, and today we are going to talk about Black Clover chapter 240. This video will contain massive spoilers, so if you do not want to be spoiled, please read the chapter beforehand. That said, let's get into the analysis of this chapter. So we ended last chapter with Asa fighting Dante and Mayumai. This guy was going toe to toe with Dante and even scarred or wounded Dante. That said, Dante got really pissed in this chapter and decided to knock out Asa with his fists. He first of all said that he wanted to have a brief chat with Asa, but it was impossible since Asa had lost his mind, so he decided to knock out Asa. And what he actually did was shocking. It seems he actually amplified his gravity magic to the point where he used it much more like reinforcement magic and decided to start launching a barrage of physical attacks on Asta and because Asta had lost control over his mind, he pretty much was just tanking these attacks to the point where he got knocked out. But it is important to note a couple of things, one of which was the fact that Dante actually wounded himself hitting Asta and that definitely means that the rigidity of Asta's body is still the same. Here is a quick comparison to give you guys an in-depth analysis into Asta's body's rigidity. It's important to know that whenever Noelle hits Asta, she actually says that Asta's body is as hard as a rock and this is formed as a result of Asta training every single day of his life. In fact, his muscles have grown in mass ever since he went through the six months time skip. So I expect his body to be even more rigid. So this actually shows us that Dante is finding it a little difficult to knock out Asta who is pretty much just tanking the attacks and had to go as far as amping his physical strength with gravity magic in order to launch this attack so it was quite interesting but the one thing i was wondering about this attack was the fact that if he's actually using gravity magic as reinforcement magic then what more of asta's anti-magic neutralizing ability so it should be in such a way that he's pretty much just using his physical strength and if that is the case then it definitely shows us how strong dante is physically so this would actually be a feat that could be used by power scale as to scale Dante to the other characters in the series with regards to physical strength. That said, with Asta out of the game, Dante turned his eyes on the two girls and I kind of like the parallel Tabata went with regarding Grey's story with that of Cinderella but I was shocked to find out that Grey had previously met Gosh before she even joined the Black Bulls. To me, this kind of felt like slight foreshadowing because if you guys remember the Deep Sea Temple, uh, Grey was paired with Gosh which was quite interesting enough then and people even started shipping Grey and Gosh, and this chapter actually confirmed the fact that Grey knew Gosh before he even joined the Black Bulls. I don't know whether Gosh remembers Grey, but I think that he does. Now, Grey was born to the White Tree family, which was a noble family of the Clover Kingdom, and her story follows the trend in the Cinderella story where she was ill treated by her mom and her sisters. Now, Grey actually was training on a magic spell which we all know and can recognize as her trademark, and that magic spell was the her transformation magic where she could transform into any person she saw and what was interesting about this spell was the fact that her sisters questioned her about the spell and asked her to perform a transformation spell and she did and took the appearance of one of her sisters which actually led them to be very mad at her and beat her to the point where she actually ran away from home and she never wanted to return because she knew what was going to happen to her if she returned home. So on her way out of the mansion and the territories around the mansion she was about to be abducted by a couple of thieves and I was quite shocked that they were even willing to go as far as rape her but this is a coherent theme within the Black Clover manga so no eyebrows raised there but those guys never got their way and was beaten up pretty bad by Gosh who was instructed by Mari to do so. Now I think that Gosh's character has been kind of underlooked in the series so far because he's a siscon and most of his statements usually are Mari centered but what he actually said in this chapter actually showed us a little more about how important Gosh is to the story because Gosh literally told Grey that if she never had the determination to move forward and run away from home then she should just get back home. Gosh was talking as one who had a lot of experience having experienced that type of thing himself. In fact, he even got himself booted out from the Adlai family by his own family members. So he was speaking with a lot of experience and that was a motivation factor for Grey and this actually helped her to get into the Magic Knights and eventually found her way to the Black Bulls. I don't know whether when she got to the Black Bulls she was able 
goals to meet God in person and thank him. But the manner in which it was highlighted in this chapter has me thinking that she never was able to do that because she was a very shy person. Now with this chapter, we clearly see that she has feelings for God and they wall up inside of her and drive her so much so that she ends up doing something really amazing in this chapter. And I've always wondered about her magic type, which was transformation magic, but Dante confirms at the end of this chapter that it is an arcane stage magic, which definitely means that the black holes are littered with arcane stage mages, which is good and funny since most of these characters were rejected by the other squads who are known as quote unquote the better squads of the Clover Kingdom. But over the course of the show, we've seen that these characters were picked by Yami for a particular reason. In fact, Fregolion even alluded to the fact that Yami was good at detecting talent, so that in itself was quite amazing. And we see now that not less than three or four characters in the Black Bulls are all arcane stage mages. But what was even more impressive about this chapter was the fact that Grey unlocked a new spell. And the spell felt like healing magic, but at the same time, it felt like borderline reality warping magic. And if it was healing magic, then it means that it wouldn't speak classified as arcane stage by Dante but if it is reality warping similar to Vanessa's then it definitely is arcane stage match. So let me know your thoughts about this in the comment sections. Do you guys believe that Grey unlocked reality warping magic because it felt like she transformed Dante's spear into something else that healed Koshi's wound. In fact Vanessa was shocked by this as per her exclamation so this was really impressive from Grey's part and made her to even be much more worthy in the eyes of Dante who decided to take both of them. But what happens in the end was that Yami finally makes his arrival thanks to Finra and he stops Dante in his tracks as he's about moving forward. Also there is a question I've always been wanting to ask myself. Do you guys believe that Dante went a step forward and moved up to 80% of his demonic power cause? It felt more like he was trying to stop Asta this time. So I kind of felt like maybe he might have increased the percentages or maybe when he was 70% he could have done this but was just playing around so that's still possible. Let me know your thoughts about this in the comment section guys. Overall I think this chapter was definitely an 8.5 out of 10 just because we actually got a lot of character development and the story has then begun to move forward once more. So those are my thoughts on the chapter. What are yours? Let me know in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel to become part of the Blizzard crew. Hit the notification bell to get notified when I release future content and as always people stay safe, stay home and prevent yourself from the coronavirus. Please guys stay safe and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.